did all of these people have to die? How many cases do you need? How many AIDS cases do you need? That's what Centers for Disease Control scientist Don Francis says he told blood industry officials way back in January of 1983 that AIDS could be transmitted through blood products. Well, I was slamming my fist on the desk saying, uh, aren't we going to do anything or are we just going to leave? And apparently we all just left. He says Armour told him not to publish his results and the company continued to heat their products at a lower temperature. Mike Wyatt says his son used heat-treated Armour blood product, and when his son tested positive in 1986, he called the company. You want to give me some information about this? Talk to me. Let me know what's going on. And all I got is, we have no information on that, and it could not have been our product. Click. People not only knew, but they knew well in advance enough that Michael's life could have been saved. I feel like Michael and a lot of other hemophiliacs uh, was slaughtered for money. Manufacturers instead proposed a task force to study the FDA's recommendation. According to an internal memo from one blood products company, Cutter, that task force was a delaying tactic. I told him. I remember Michael looked over at me and he says, you mean I have AIDS? And I told him yes. And he wanted to know, he says, does it mean I'm going to die? And what do you tell a child? So, so here we were caught in this terrible irony of being caught between this rock and this hard place. The risk of bleeding to death was more serious than the risk of getting infected with HIV then. At that time, that is exactly what we thought. But Brownstein didn't mention that the National Hemophilia Foundation is funded in part by blood products manufacturers. And critics say that makes it an ineffective watchdog.